hypoventilation produces hypoxemia because inadequate ventilation fails to replace alveolar oxygen as it's taken up by pulmonary capillary blood. And as a corollary, the inadequate ventilation fails to remove alveolar carbon dioxide from the pulmonary capillary blood. Thus, hypercapnia is the hallmark consequence of hypoventilation. Also, as we've talked about, when hypoxemia results from hypoventilation alone, it's accompanied by a normal AA gradient. And in general, patients with hypercapnic respiratory failure are usually hypoxemic as well, either because we have hypoventilation, which directly lowers the alveolar oxygen content, or because whatever process is leading to hypoventilation is also elevating the AA gradient via some other mechanisms, such as VQ mismatch or shunt. Now, there are many causes of hypoventilation that can be commonly seen in hospitalized patients, and they include neurologic or muscular weakness, central nervous system depression, often due to medications like opioids or sedatives, or anatomic lesions or strokes, obesity hypoventilation syndrome, chest wall deformities, which include severe kyphoscoliosis, flail chest following trauma or cardiac surgery, and finally, severe obstructive lung disease.